Okay, so here we are with our friend the cat again, and we're going to be looking at the muscles in the hip. Okay, the muscles in the posterior thigh, and we'll also look at muscles in the leg. Okay, so we'll start here in the hip region, okay, and we're on the posterior hip. So uh, we have two very important muscles that are associated with uh, this area. These are the gluteal muscles, okay, and we have the gluteus medius, which is this muscle here. And we have the gluteus maximus, which is this muscle right here. Now, um, the cat arrangement of the gluteus medius and maximus is different than the human arrangement, okay? And uh, this is one of the differences between the cat and the human, okay? So in humans, the gluteus maximus is the larger of the two muscles, and it completely covers the um, gluteus medius, uh, especially on its medial side. And um, so you really have to reflect the gluteus maximus to see all of the gluteus medius, okay? So in the cat, you can see that the size difference is the opposite, okay? The gluteus medius is the larger of the two muscles in the cat. and uh, Clearly, we can see most of the gluteus medius, even if the gluteus maximus is in position. So uh, the gluteus maximus doesn't cover as much of the gluteus medius as it does in the human, okay? <clears throat> We're going to ignore this muscle because this is a muscle that we only find in the cat, okay? We're gonna turn over a little bit. And we've got the edge of the sartorius here. We'll look at the sartorius from another view later on. We've got a beautiful muscle that we need to look at that's right here. Here's where the muscle actually is. And uh, <clears throat> this muscle is the tensor fascia latte muscle. Okay, it sounds like you just went to Starbucks. Uh, but tensor fascia latte, hold the... Uh, the high fat cream, okay, but really this is a muscle and it has the name that it has because when it contracts, it tenses, puts tension on this connective tissue sheath that you can see here. So this white is kind of like an aponeurosis, okay, but it's a little thicker uh, than what we saw in the anterior abdominal wall. And this is the actual fascia latte. Okay, so the tensor fascia latte muscle, which is up here, when it contracts, tenses this sheath, and that acts at the lateral knee. And so the tensor along with the gluteus medius are very important for abduction at the hip. Okay, so those two muscles together would give us that abduction movement. Okay. We're going to move around to the posterior thigh now. And we have uh, one of our rival gangs that we think about in the thigh. Okay, so we've got a posterior gang that works against an anterior gang. Okay, and the posterior gang are the hamstrings. Okay, and there are three members, members to the hamstring gang. The lateral muscle is the biceps femoris. And then medially, we have the two semi-brothers. Okay, the skinny semi-brother, who's always superficial, is the semi-tendinosis. And he's named because he is pretty uniform in width through his entire length, kind of like a tendon. Okay, if we separate those two members and look deep inside here, we have the other semi-muscle, which is the semi-membranosis. Okay, now the semi-membranosis is a much larger and chunkier muscle than the semi-tendinosis, and we'll see a better view of that from the anterior side. Okay, so again, our hamstrings, hamstrings group, the biceps femoris, semi-tendinosis, 
semi-membranosus. We'll review the origins and insertions um, on the human model, but the actions are to help extend the hip and to flex the knee. Okay, We're going to move the bicep femoris out of the way a little bit now, and we're going to look at the leg and we have five muscles that are prominently displayed for us here in this region. So we're going to start posteriorly and work our way anterior to, anteriorly till we get to the tibia bone. Okay, so the first muscle as we're starting posteriorly is the gastrocnemius. Okay, so the gastrocnemius is a very important muscle considered by most people to be the prime mover for plantar flexion. Okay, now plantar flexion is the movement that you have when you curl the plantar surface of your foot and the plantar surface is the sole of the foot. Okay, so when you're pulling on the calcaneus and making the heel come toward the tibia and fibula and making the plantar surface curl and the toes curl, that is plantar flexion. Assisting the gastrocnemius in plantar flexion is the next muscle, which is the soleus muscle. Okay, and the soleus gets its name because it looks like the flatfish called the sole. Okay, as we move that one away, Okay, then we have this next set here, which are the fibularis muscles. In the cat, we don't really distinguish uh, the two fibularis muscles, even though they're here. So this is really the fibularis group. And this is going to be an important muscle for eversion of the foot. Okay, then as we come around to the anterior side we have two muscles that are important to dorsiflexion. Okay, now the dorsum of the foot is essentially the surface of the foot. If you were looking at your feet, looking down at the floor where your feet are, the surface of your foot that you would be looking at is the dorsum. Okay, so when you use these next two muscles you curve the dorsum of the foot. Okay, so that's why these muscles are described as being involved in dorsiflexion. Okay, so the two muscles that we have, first is the extensor digitorum longus. Okay, now I didn't actually remove all of this connective tissue here, but if I had, we'd see that the tendon of the extensor digitorum longus comes down uh, here past the ankle and then it divides up into individual tendons that go to each of the toes. Okay, so those are the tendons that would pull on the toes and make them pull away from the floor in that dorsiflexed uh, position. Okay, and then next to the extensor digitorum longus, we have the last muscle in our group here and this is the tibialis anterior. It's telling you in its name where it is. Okay, it is the most anterior of the muscles in this area and it's right next to the tibia which is right here. Okay, so this is the anterior border of the tibia that we looked at in the bone labs. Okay, so again starting from posterior to anterior, gastrocnemius, soleus, and again these two are involved in plantar flexion, the fibularis group involved in eversion of the foot, and the extensor digitorum longus, and the tibialis anterior involved in dorsiflexion. Okay, and since plantar flexion and dorsiflexion are opposites of each other, uh, the gastrocnemius and the tibialis anterior make up 
an antagonistic pair. Okay, and we could say that the soleus is a synergist to the gastrocnemius, whereas the extensor digitorum longus is a synergist to the tibialis anterior.